Hey everybody, back at you again with uh, the very easygoing old school uh, character of the Blue Devil from DC Comics. Love this guy, he was a heck of a jokester. Um, very cool, very easygoing, and uh, very fun to watch and read. Uh, had a blast with him constantly. When I was younger, I was a huge fan and uh, was always out to make a laugh with it. Bear with me just a second here. Got stuff popping up all over the place. Want to let everybody know that I'm going to be here. And uh, thank you for showing up. Hey, thanks, Noel. I appreciate it, man. Um, going to share this over to the page so everybody can see it. And there we go. <clears throat> All right. Sorry about that. I want to make sure it was live. Hey, Heather. Been a while since you've been on one of these. Been running amok this summer with the kids. I know what you've been doing. <laughs> Yeah, this guy was uh, in the '90s. He was a a huge comedy type character. Um, very serious as far as the action went. Very formidable as a hero, especially in the DC universe. Um, but he was always smiling. I mean, he was quirky, kind of like Spider-Man back in the day. You know, everybody called him the Blue Devil because he had these big horns on his head, but he was always um, on the brighter side of things. And uh, I don't know um, any character that was that diverse, especially back then. You know, and, and I, by back then, I mean 20 years ago, back in the 90s, um, in his heyday. Because that's when this character was just all about it. I mean, he's been around forever, but... Uh, when he took off with his new series in the 90s, it was a um, one of the mid 90s, the early 90s, you know, 93, 94, 95, right around in there, uh, that it was rebooted, and I loved this character at that point. Uh, him and Lobo were just two of my total favorites at the time uh, from the DC bullpen, and uh, you still don't know much about him even to today. Uh, he, he's pretty wild as far as that goes, and uh, a lot more information needs to be revealed about him. Even to the big fans, uh, there's a lot of gaps and mystery to this guy that just don't get told anymore. Um, of course, with the modern, the modern DC era post-rebirth, and, uh, you know, the New 52 version, which kind of scaled him back a lot. Uh, he kind of looks like a cross between um, Hellboy and Aquaman now, with a little Nightcrawler thrown in just for fun. And uh, it's not the same character to me anymore. But I still dig the character in this form, and uh, hope they get it all straightened out, whatever DC is doing. They're talking about doing something cool with them. I don't know what they've got going on. Uh, did a little research on it. They've been mentioning something coming up. So hopefully it's not going to be another um, Titans Go type of thing. Because <laughs> if they go back into animation, I'm going to be upset because that's just ridiculous. But <clears throat> it is what it is. So, you know. I'm hoping they get back to back to their roots and do something along the lines of what they did in the 90s where they rebooted and did the whole new DC uh, thing way before anybody else did, modernized their characters, kicked them out, and brought in a bunch of new talent and really tore up the industry. And then, you know, Marvel tore up, I mean, just came flying out of nowhere right behind them with all that young blood talent. And did nothing with it. 
um, they came out with these fancy, fancy high-end card sets. Uh, I think it was, uh, don't hold me to this, but I think it was, it was either Fleer or Upper Deck that did the, 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 the uh, DC cards. The original uh, white trimmed ones and blue trimmed ones. And then uh, Marvel came out with a line of cards too and a uh, company did theirs. And I'm not sure who that was offhand. Um, but I have both of those sets and I loved them. It was a beautiful reboot and revitalization of the industry when it needed it. And uh, this guy was one of the leading characters behind that. They had, uh, let's see, they had Lobo taking over. They had Guy Gardner as the main primary Green Lantern at the time because Hal Jordan had quit. And uh, John Stewart was MIA. So... It was pretty cool. And then they took Guy Gardner's powers away and made him into um, Guy Gardner or something else. It was some kind of warrior. I think they called him the warrior for a while. I don't know if that's what it was or not. I think it was. They had him all painted up red. It was weird. But uh, to each their own, you know, DC was trying at least. Where Marvel had all of their X titles get rebooted and uh, reworked. And then they had Jim Lee and, you know, Chris Claremont and Mark Silvestri and Wills Potasio and all those cool guys. Greg Capullo was in that mix. And they just had them coming out left and right. So it, it looked really, really good for a long time. But, hey, thanks, Mike. I appreciate it, man. Sorry you're having a bad connection, dude. Um, <laughs> they uh, had 20 different things going on and you know Marvel and DC were running neck and neck at the time and it was a great time for the market they need to get back to basics and figure out what they're going to do however Marvel is of course as we all know Marvel's tanking their, their line in 2019 according to what they say right now but I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be a scarcity tactic, which they used with their movies and their DVDs and stuff like that. And they're going to yank stuff off the market, make make the current stuff that's out there and collected valuable again, and then turn around and do something else like a uh, collected trade release or you know limited uh, comics or cartoons or whatever they're going to do, and they're going to boot it out that way. And then it'll be, you know, collected franchises like that. It'll be collectibles that way. But I don't think we're going to see the modern Marvel switch over like DC's planning on doing. I, I just don't see them going digital and moving over. Oh, went to turn my lead and dropped my pencil. Um, I just don't see them doing the turnover like they expected to, you know, with uh, with everybody else. Unless they're going to take it to where they go digital and have your comic books exclusive through their uh, their digital line through that new subscription service they're talking about kicking out, which would be eh, it could be either hit hit or miss. Um, it could be HBO on the go kind of, or they could go their own Netflix way and make all the media work. And if they do, I think they're going to choke out the market, and it's going to be so expensive you're not going to be able to afford it. Um, but we'll see. But this guy right here, I would have loved to have drawn this guy back in the day. Um, unfortunately, I was too young when the books came out uh, to get into the comics and get in the industry for what they were doing. I wasn't quite uh, good enough for DC. And um, to this day, I don't know if I really am. I produce fast enough, but I don't know if they like my quality or not. Um, not that I'm pitching for a job or anything like that. It's just... I don't know if there's an opportunity that's going to come up to do that with the style that they're going for now where they've modernized everything into that um, Brett Booth style, you know, that kind of everybody's leaned down and really gritty in the way that they're drawn, which is a nice look for DC because it fits right into their, uh, their old school crime drama look. And it's nice that they've gotten away from that 70s, 80s look that they were stuck in for a long time. 
So whatever works, you know. Um, I'm not knocking it either way. Whatever they do is what they do. They know that better than anybody else. And, uh, you know, they, they definitely have been around a while. I don't know how much of uh, the corporate situation is going to be involved with uh, the new DC coming up, but we'll see what's going to happen. I mean, that's all we can wait and do. But for me, I'm putting out uh, comics left and right. And I interviewed probably, I don't know, 15 people in the last week. And every one of them have asked me for, um, you know, they're indie people. And I'm not going to give away any names or anything like that. But I found it interesting that everybody wants to be working for DC or Marvel or, you know, Image or whatever. And not one of them can produce at a level of more than six to eight weeks for a comic book. And I'm sorry, but that's not going to be pro quality. You know, I do three books a month and at any given time, and I'm stockpiling my issues. So, you know, I've got seven or eight titles that I'll work on. Um, let me see. Uh, roughly seven titles. And I've got two freelance titles that I do as well that are going to uh, come out later this year. And, you know, I do three books a month, and it's just uh, that's all I work on, though. I do that and my consulting, and that's what I do. You know, my marketing consulting keeps me pretty busy, but that's regular routine stuff that I don't really have to work at unless I do my client, you know, until it comes to my client meetings and things like that. But as far as comics go, I'm, the, I'm in here in the grind every day, man, just knocking this stuff out. And I'm not knocking anybody by doing that. I mean, I don't mean any disrespect or anything like that. It's just don't say you want to make comic books and then don't. You know what I mean? Don't say you want to make comics and then not work for it. And you wonder, well, why won't they hire me? Why won't they hire me? Well, it's not you're not fast enough. And it is what it is, and I accept that, and I respect that. It's plain and simple. But don't whine at me and ask me, you know, hey, man, how do you work so fast? And then... Well, I give up the time that I need for the discipline I need to do what I need to do. My family doesn't suffer for that. I do what I need to do with the job, and when I'm done, I'm done. But uh, it's like Jack Kirby used to say, I do the work and I get out of it. But, uh, yeah, it's it's just getting crazy to where, you know, people have these egos, and they want to make $150, $250, you know, anywhere from $150 to $250 a page, and they're like, well, you know, I, I can I can only do a book in six weeks, and and the the uh, image style of things is to do you know three issues, and then you hold up and take a break from the book and let it run its course, and then you come back and you do three more issues or five more issues. You can't do that because then if you're doing a monthly book, there's a production gap. So get right with your business side of things as well as your creative side. That's what I'm saying. And you know, there's a lesson to be learned there. Um, if you want to produce professional comic books and produce them at the monthly level, you've got to be able to produce. So, you know, when people say, well, you're not quite ready yet, it's because you're saying that you need six to eight weeks to do a book. I mean, I understand you got to do the day job thing and whatever comes up, but you got to put in the commitment. If you want to make a professional level book, you've got to make the professional level quality. And it's got to be not only just good, it's got to be fast. So, you know, if you can't get under four weeks, then you're in trouble. So, you know, you need to think about that because even if you're doing three books ahead of time, you got to come off and say, okay, well, I'm going to do three books, you know, on this contract, but I need to turn around and make sure that I'm producing three books to get the job and then three more books to come out and follow up that, that first three issues so that I don't fall behind on a gap. Uh, Mark Bagley used to do he used to work five and six days a week and would kill out so many books on Spider-Man to keep ahead so that no one would bump him off the, the roster. That's why he worked so much, and he was considered one of the fastest artists out there um, because he was one of the fastest producers in his prime in the 90s. And, uh, you know, all through the 80s and 90s, he did that. And now he's over at DC with a permanent project, and he's been back and forth a couple of times, but for the most part... Uh, the dude's got constant work because of the fact that he is not willing to give up his slot. 
because most publishers come in and say, okay, I'm going to give you five issues. I'm going to give these guys five issues. I'm going to give Team C five issues. And that's what you're looking at. You know, so that when you're doing issues one through five, somebody else is doing uh, six through 12 or whatever it may be. So you got to start thinking about that and think about the job that you want and say, if I want to do a permanent job and I want a permanent contract and I want to get exclusivity or at least a job that pays and keeps me on contract with these publishers, that's what you got to think about. You know, how, what are the guys that are in there doing, doing it? You know, how are they doing it and getting it going? And how are they getting it to work? And how are they getting this? And how are they getting that? And whatnot, you know? Um, Jack Kirby used to sit down and do an entire book. And he would run three or four issues, three or four plots. And he said, I used to draft out and lay out three or four plots on pages. I would get, you know, 120 pages worth of, worth of uh, blue lines and come in and sit down and just draw out the entire book of three or four issues in one time and have them sitting around my desk in a stack and then just sit down and do the work. And then when I was done, I would take a couple of weeks off. And then when the next couple of batches of scripts came in or plots or posted notes or whatever they were from, you know, Stan or whoever he was working with at the time, that's what he would end up doing. He would go off and get those stacks and then go off and do it again. And that's what he would end up doing each and every time. So, you know, you got to think about what you're doing and get it out there. But anyway, that's where we are, we are with this one because... If I got a, ch a chance to draw this guy, I, I would love to do a couple of issues of him. Um, I don't know that I would be able to stay on because I don't know that uh, I could hold up to the DC uh, quality standard, but I would definitely go for it and give it a shot because this is a fun-loving character. I used to love this guy. Um, whenever I got sick, there was an arc that he had going on where he uh, – he turned flesh colored and lost his his ears changed his horns fell off or actually withdrew back in his head and he he looked human and he lost his powers and you'd think being like this he would be all about you know uh, the mutation of it all and instead he felt bad because he was born like this he feels bad because of the fact that when he changes he's human and normal and can't do anything anymore that he used to do think about that one they took it from the other perspective of him being normal, being out of alignment. Just freaking phenomenal writing in those things. And I talk like he's, like I said, like, again, I talk like he's real, but I, I know he's fictional. But still, it's an awesome character, and I, I just love to think about the diversity of the stories like that. But, okay, we've got him kicked out pretty fast here. I am going to shade under this nose, which I normally don't do, but in this case, because he is who he is, I'm going to put in these shades to make him pop off, because he's a, um, he's a very light blue, and I want to give him that edge, just a little bit of a brighter detail, and this kind of adds that creepy effect to him, you know, where his eyes are shadowed and whatnot, so... And he had these cool bulbous eyes. Um, they were always bright. I mean, even when he was ticked off, they would squint down, and you could always see his eyeballs. Um, very, very bright-eyed. Very charismatic character. Just kind of nick those a little bit. Look like he's turned up that nose a little. Put in that dimple. And depending who you are, depending on the artist that did it, uh, sometimes he has this chin thing going on, sometimes he doesn't. I like to put the little notch in his chin, but it is what it is. But like I said, this dude is very cool. And very easy going. 
It'll make his eyebrows very dark because they are black. No doubt about it. They are black. Makes them pop right off. Yeah, very cool. Now I'm going to put in a little bit of this. I'm tr I'm trying to get a little more detail in because uh, people have been asking me, you know, can you do a little more line work on them and pop them out a little more? Yeah, I can. But like I said, my style is very open and I don't want to ruin it. But in this case, I will put in a little more detailing because it was a request. So... Get that going a different angle. Yeah, it's definitely got that 90s look now with the with the cross hatching the <laughs> the lines and stuff. Yeah, exactly, Eric. I'm looking over at the notes now to see what you guys are posting. Yeah, exactly, man. That's that's one of the big things. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, I had. Uh, Oh, good Lord. It was, uh, who was the editor? Uh, I think it was um, Chuck Dixon was doing some editing at the time and um, as well as some writing chores and stuff. And I, I sent him some stuff to review and he told me flat out, he said, man, he goes, your stuff's decent. He said, but you got to clean up your line work. And he said, you got to speed up. And I was all of about 19 at the time. And he told me, he said, flat out, he said, stop mimicking everybody else. He said, you can't, he said, I can tell right now you're mimicking some of these other guys. And he said, you need to quit that. And he said, you need to get your own style. And he said, you, you got clean lines, but he said, speed it up. Um, that was one of the big things. And he said, if you can't do at least three pages, um, you can't lay out at least three pages in a sitting and you can't draw at least one plus a day, you're out the door. You'll never get work. And he was right. Until I learned how to do, um, and let, until I learned how to speed it up and get three pages done a day, man, I I would do it like this, you know, just knock it out, boom, lay it out, and then knock the whole thing out at one time. If I didn't do this style right here and uh, really knock out the work, of course, my comic stuff is a lot cleaner than this, but um, that was the point. You know, if I didn't do the work, yeah, nobody would touch me, and it, it was crazy. Uh, they wouldn't even review my stuff for the longest time because they would tell me, thank you for the submission, but we can't use you right now because da 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 And that was the end of it. I thought I wanted to shade that, but I think I'm going to leave that open because it looks like it clogs up his head too much, and I don't, I don't want to clutter it with the detail. Um, so we're going to take that out of there real quick. But, uh, yeah, that looks better. I'm going to leave that open for a nice highlight. So, yeah, that'll work. But, uh, yeah, I, I used to get chewed out constantly um, by editors for being in their face all the time because I would turn in stuff that was too quick, and they'd be like, well, why don't you work on it a little more? And then, uh, you know, when I would show portfolios where I slowed down a little bit, they would be like, well, yeah, we'll hire you, and we'll talk to you, and da 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 da, -da. And then nobody would ever call me back because of the fact that, <laughs> that I was too slow and I didn't know it, and they weren't going to tell me. Because they want you to figure it out on your own, and they want you to, you know, they want you to know it all. And if you don't know it all, they don't care, um, because they've got 20 guys that do know, and you know, 20 other guys that do know, and 20 other guys that can work and do the job right then and there, and that's what they want. Um, so you know, think about that when you're getting into this. Uh, a buddy of mine, I won't disclose anybody or throw them under the bus. A buddy of mine, you know, said in a discussion earlier today, it was. It's one of those things where you have it or you don't, and not everybody has it or everybody would be doing it. And that's a valid point, you know. Um, the problem with that is is you have to respect the fact that the people that don't, don't. And they're not meant to be the way you are. So, you know, if you are fast enough to do a page a day and knock it out and it looks good, then you're doing a good job and keep it up and keep moving. Because you're going to need it. But uh, if you want to get, if you say you want to work for Marvel or DC or Image, you know, don't go off putting in these projects at Image with a couple of issues stacked up and then say, well, you know, well, I did three issues and we're ready to go. Well, 
the thing is you have to be ready with, you know, nine or 10 or 12 or 14 or 16 or 18 issues and be ready to go with that stuff because these small publishers like to go in there and they like to pitch to uh, image all the time. And that's, and they'll tell you flat out, you know, your artwork may be good, but the reason you may get clear, kicked out and not told any different is because of the fact that one, your artist is slow or two, they've got something else they want you to figure out because of the fact you don't know the business side of it. So understand that and be sure to get that going. So, but anyway, that's where it's at. Because I was going to submit to DC, but uh, I decided not to. Because I was going to prove a point to find out if there was a valid way to get in or not. And I'm still building up that portfolio sample set just because I want to do that practice. And uh, it's like these. It's a practice thing for me. But uh, I don't think I'm going to fight. I don't think I'm going to try and fight the big fight here and go for DC anymore. Because of the fact that I could be doing all that extra time on my own books. And with my books going monthly and me doing three titles, I could step in and easily do four a month if I added up that extra week's worth of time that I put into uh, portfolio stuff. So, just saying. But I'll keep doing these as long as you guys want me to, like I said. Um awesome stuff here i think we have uh hey jim glad you made it man um uh, i think we have this done for today i think i'm gonna leave it there and like i said i want a little retro with it a little bit of 90s style possibly that kind of feel it's what it's got right now and um tomorrow what am i drawing tomorrow what am i drawing tomorrow uh i have what do we have tomorrow I don't have the list in front of me. Um, I am going to draw... Hmm. I think I'm going to do a Supergirl, uh, a Superboy tomorrow. I haven't done Superboy yet, and I want to do a, um, a classic Superboy, not the, um, you know, not the modern one that's the clone and whatnot, or the alternate uh, timeline, or the, um, the Chinese Superboy. Um, I think I'm going to go with the classic... Superboy, young Clark Kent, and uh, we'll go from there. But I've got to grab my new list because it's in the other office and uh, get that going for you guys. But anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for understanding about the storm. Thanks for listening to me chat. You guys, please comment, post, share, all that good stuff. Give me your feedback on the conversation from these videos. Feel free to chat with me because I will answer you as soon as I see it. And, uh, you know, you'll have a chance to interact with me a little more. Uh, check it out. Also got some uh, Friday. I've got a couple videos coming out for you guys from my new how-to series. I'm going to be disclosing a bunch of stuff about comic books and how to create them. So uh, you guys will have that going. And I've got the webcomic coming up, uh, the first look at that, which I'm going to be sharing behind-the-scenes looks on it um, here on, on the page, as well as uh, got some surprises for you coming up on special access to a bunch of this stuff, so you can see exactly what I'm doing with the comic books that I'm creating, and uh, we're going to go from there. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'm going to put some videos on uh, later tonight, so you guys will have those on the page as well uh, from the previous uh, couple of videos here uh, through the first 100, and we're going to catch up with all those cards that I caught up and those videos and stuff, and uh, we're going to go from there. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Regular time between uh, about 4 Central uh, is when I'm going to try and come on. Thanks for hanging out again. Talk to you tomorrow.